Good early morning, everyone. Welcome to my garage winery. It's um, a really wet, cold day in Liverpool, which is back to normal for September. Um, just in time for malolactic fermentation. We'll talk about that in another episode. It's just after five in the morning and I'm up early because today the red wine needs to be pressed. It's not gone to dryness, but because it's a Sangiovese grape, it's a thin skin grape, but with tannin that'll just beat your head in. Um, I've decided that around 1.016 specific gravity last night, that I was going to have to press it in the morning. So what do we have to do then? We've got to get ready for the press. So get everything sanitized. And then the other thing that I need to do is take a look at the red wine. You can see it's still, I don't know if you can see it, but it is still bubbling away. So we are still under fermentation. That's good because this thing has just been roaring. One fast. other neat little trick that I've got up my sleeve. Maybe I've shown this already. I'm not sure, but I'll show it again. Is that I've got two buckets. I've got my star sand bucket and that'll, that'll live forever. Um, really if you generate it and keep it sealed so that's nice fresh star sand for um, keeping things um, sanitized but I've also got my sodium bicarb and I clean with sodium bicarb I don't have any fancy cleaner I seem to like sodium bicarb so uh, it's like a Mr. Bean episode it looks like 101.2 before degas and before the precipitate settles. So, um. okay, well, it's about six in the morning now, so we're doing well. And I've got the press wood just in to the sanitizing star sand solution. And I just want to make sure it's well coated for 10 minutes. Like I said, obviously wood expands when it gets wet, so I don't want to have it soaking for hours or anything like that, but I do want to have it sanitized. And then I've got my sanitized solution. Just give this a spray off as well. Good, so star sand has a surfactant in it that seems to cling on to everything. Um, so looking at the, the back of the label seems to be made of two things, an acid and a surfactant. So give this a good spray, it's going to um, kind of stick to it, I imagine, and 10 minutes later hopefully it'll be good and sanitized and ready to go. A little bird which is brilliant out there just having a having a chirp so tells me that the sun's ready to come up and hopefully the rain will clear as well. So hi folks, so final bricks reading 1.012 or specific gravity reading is 1.012 that puts the bricks at uh, if you remember, I had said I want to go to press with the Sangiovese between two and four bricks, so I split that right down the middle. I got lucky. Uh, it's because I got back late from work last night and it just would have been uh, too long a night to so press. One last thing. Let's see. So it seems to be pouring all right. I'm gonna to have to keep an eye on the sieve just to make sure that it doesn't get blocked, which it probably will at some point, but it's just there to keep out any seeds really, and maybe larger pieces of, of um, precipitate that we don't want, or sediment or whatever you wanna call it. And I'm just going to take my time doing this. Uh, it's a real pleasure just just letting it do its thing. And there's no rush, really, uh, especially with red wine, because it's fine to have some oxygen. Now, let's have a look here. We're starting to plug up a bit.
Now, when these grapes arrived, the Sangiovese form really tight packed clusters of small grapes. And I mean really tight packed. So I reckon that the mass of each crate that came or, or box that came or that arrived was about nine kilograms then because of how compact the grape is. So I'm getting a little bit more juice than I had thought. One nice thing, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a little, um, a small little tray here that holds all the sanitized bits and bobs and it's worked out really well, to be honest. So I do recommend having a little tray there. Okay, let's see. Now, if you don't have to manipulate the paddles too much, that means you got the basket centered fairly well. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, I just wanna bulk this um, carboy up to uh, its maximum capacity for um, fermentation, which I'm pretty much there. And I'll switch over. I've got my little my little demi John here. Just let it kind of trickle down. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do a little switcheroo, which is always a bit tricky and messy. And I'll have to get the height adjusted for the uh, demi john as well. So let's give that a try here. Wow. That is a lot of juice. Fantastic. Get this off and down. I am losing juice, but that's the nature of the beast. There we go. Gorgeous. And then this can pop right in, just like that. Turn that to the side so it's stable. And then it's just a nice time for a bit of a wipe down. There we go. Got my fingers under it now. Perfect. That looks good. So we've yet to press the juice. Come on out. There we go, but I have generated enough room for the rest of it. Okay. Let's pop that back on. I almost took my coffee out. That would be an absolute heartbreak. All right. Let's get the last liter of juice here. Transfer them. That's good. Yeah, so there's about two liters left. That's good. Woof, Demi John's half full. Well, folks, that's a miscalculation. I'm gonna have more wine than I know what to do with. Jeez, this is gonna be um, a light press in this Demi John. Okay, time for the blocks. So you crisscross them first across the paddles, and I just try to get them as centered as possible, but they're gonna move around anyway once the ratchet comes down. Second set, like Jenga, just across the other way. Third set, once again, same way as the first. There we go, keeping everything centered and right on the shaft here. Now it's just a matter of rounding this down. And then it's a bit of gymnastics to get this tightened. Hopefully I've got the pins. No, I don't recall what the pins are called, but hopefully I've got the pins set right. I'm either for going forward or reverse, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So let's just get this. Let's check my volume, because we don't want to go over, you know, 80%. 
I think I can give her another twist here. Got two pins. One goes one way. You can see the tall end pointing towards me on the left, and then it's the opposite on the other end. And what that does is it allows one to slip over and one to actually catch and crank. Okay. And when I want to reverse the ratchet, I just reverse the two pins and up it goes. Okay, let's do some gymnastics here. We're almost to the limit of the um, one gallon demijohn as well. So I'll have to go with a plastic bucket after this. Okay, and when you're pressing uh, with the ratchet, you've got to have a hand on the ratchet here, at least to start bring her over and then you want to make sure when this pin pops up that it falls back down in okay and again over make sure it falls in now to get it to fall in you just have to give it a little bit of a smack watch smack and then it drops in so it does take a little bit of So obviously it's too full for fermentation, but I'll get to that. In a so you can see my press through the slats. It's now down to here. So I've compressed the pumice now halfway. And I'm assuming this is going to be extremely astringent. Woof. Wow completely different to the free run. Tastes, um, tastes like seed. Not going to be sharp. Okay, I'm back with the copper. I'm not going to chase any more press juice. I think it's going to be way too astringent. So, oh, I got my first yellow jacket wasp in here that's fine but um, that's the nature of the beast so let's see if we can back this off it should there we go you only need to crank it a couple times to get it to back off there we go it's loose now yeah so the wasp is just gonna love this juice and there's no way around it all right let's see boom boom Boom, 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 boom. These are six blocks. And we'll pull the pins. I'll get this press juice out of the way. There we go. Pull the pins. The smell is just phenomenal. It really is beautiful. Okay, and off we go. Let's expose the pumice. Here's our pumice cake. That looks good. Okay, I'll get this out of the way now. So that's kind of our second pressing, so to speak, and that'll be uber astringent. This off now. I recommend you wear, um, you consider wearing gloves for this. <laughs> But hopefully most of the color has been extracted now into the wine itself. Off we go.
boom, boom, boom. That's it, time for cleanup.